Hey there, and welcome to this video. My name is Zach Gerberg from Medilumine, and today I'll be performing the analysis of a PET-CT 4-mouse dataset from uh, Camille Sokolovsky at the TRI. Um, so we're going to start by loading up our underlay and our overlay, which are our CT and our PET, respectively. So we're going to load in our CT as our underlay and load our PET over top of it as our overlay. And so we can see these in our 2D views over here. We can slice through them using these arrows. And we can also view them in 3D over here, just like this. Um, and so what we can start with, obviously, is cropping so that we can only view one mice, one mouse. Sorry. So if we crop just this mouse, just like this, using the cropping tool, just like that, now we can access just this mouse on its own. And we can save this overlay and underlay uh, as a new DICOM or a TIFF, Nifty, whatever file format you'd prefer. All of them are available. And so over here, we can adjust our windowing just at the start here so we can see everything in a better light, just like this. And what we can notice right off the bat is if we change the windowing on our overlay a little bit, so maybe a little bit more intense, we can see that these, uh, these, these data sets are already fused. So they're already uh, correctly co-registered. Uh, and this is due to the acquisition. But in the case that they weren't properly co-registered, we can perform uh, some fusion operations over here using the fusion uh, module. And I've recorded another video uh, presenting this, this, um, this section. So what we're going to do uh, to start is we're actually going to segment just the bones. Um, and so once we're happy with the windowing uh, of, of the underlay, so we can see the bones exactly how, uh, how we'd like to, maybe something like that, what we can do is create a new class called bone. And so all of the voxels right now are currently in the unclassified class, but we're going to move some of them over to the bone class. And the way we're going to do that is by performing a thresholding operation. So essentially everything above our center value of our windowing here is everything that we see currently in the voxels. So when we perform this thresholding operation above center, every voxel we currently see is now transferred to the bone class right so that looks great we've got everything we want but it's quite dirty so the way we're going to clean that up is using some special operations so we're going to remove things from the bone class now so we're going to go from bone to unclassified and we're going to remove them using some special operations within the find components so find small components is great for doing this because we can set a maximum volume of let's say three millimeters cubed and everything that every component that is under that volume is now removed from the bone class the next thing we can do is use the fill bucket, which is exactly like in Microsoft Paint. You click on a region and it gets colored how you want it, except this time we're not coloring it. We're going from uh, the bone class to the unclassified class. So I'm purposely removing all the components that seem like they are not attached to the main body of the mouse. But occasionally you'll get them attached and you'll lose an arm just like this. So what we have to do is separate them, <clears throat> separate these components, and we can do that using uh, the paintbrush tool. So you can notice that the connection is actually happening right over there. So what we're going to do is we're going to first remove a little bit of this over here so we can see a bit better. And so I'm using the paintbrush tool now from the uh, bone class to the output class. Oops. And so this is the connection right there. We're just going to trace a line right down the middle along the hand and remove everything over there. So now if we've correctly separated everything, we should no longer lose an arm, but it is possible that there's another connection perhaps right at the top here. So we can actually go in and adjust that. Um, so if I zoom in over here, we can remove some more of that, but it seems like they're actually already disconnected. So we'll use the fill bucket, remove this, and look at that, we have not lost an arm, fantastic. Move this over here. Oops. There we go. And we'll remove the sternum just for some aesthetics so we can see the segmentation that will perform later a little bit better. So here it's actually still connected. So we'll go in and disconnect that. Just like this. We can remove it with the full bucket. There we have it. And so what we can do now is we can perform some segmentations using the 2D views. So we're going to hop into our 2D views and we're going to use the scribble tool to outline the heart. Um, so right now I have the underlay off, but we're going to turn it back on, adjust the windowing a little bit, and we're going to go and find our heart. There we have it over here. 
zoom in a little bit. And so obviously when you have a, uh, a cleaner CT, this, this del delimitation becomes better. Um, but for now, what we're going to do is add a heart and we're just going to go by eye. When you use a contrast agent, this also improves uh, your ROI drawing because uh, you get a little bit more of a anatomical reference. Whereas here we're going purely off of what we see and the contrast isn't amazing. But we're going to keep going just like this. And so once we're satisfied, what we can do is we can hop into the scribble menu, we can segment the foreground. So essentially we create a red mask using the wireframe that we created using the scribbles. And then we can assign those red masks as the output class. Um, so now we've got our heart segmented. So we can see this in 3D and there's our heart. And so what we can do is we can smooth this now so that it looks maybe a little bit less robotic. And so there's our heart segmented. The next thing we can do is we can actually segment from the pet signal as well. Because if you'll notice in the pet here, you've got some really, really clear, distinct regions of the kidneys and the bladder. And we can also change the rendering of the overlay and the underlay. So we'll change it to a MIP over here. We'll hop back into our 2D views. Increase the intensity there, the visual intensity. And we're going to remove the scribbles here. So what we're going to do is we're going to go down to the kidneys there they are we're going to add a class kidney and we're going to segment these based off of the pet so we can use the iso tool here which essentially performs the th same thresholding operation that you get uh, when you right click and do thresholding but the um the threshold itself is determined from where you click so we're going to click over on the border here segment the entire kidney in one click just like that we can also add one for the bladder we can move down to the bladder over here so we can click ISO on the border. And now if I hide the overlay, you can see in the 3D view that we've got all of this segmented. And so now that we've got everything segmented, it's really easy for us to record a video uh, demonstrating how, uh, how clean our data looks. Uh, so what we can do is we can change the background over here in the 3D rendering menu. We can change the transparency to zero so that it's clear and you can uh, you can post this image on top of other graphic design content without a white or black border. Uh, and you can also record a movie. So over here, if you press sc save screenshot, you get a screenshot with the resolution dimensions that you, you defined. And then you can save an, uh, a rotational movie. And so the way that this looks um, is over here. I've already made one just so we can be a little quicker. So this is what the movies end up looking like. Uh, so it's a rotation. And this can be some very cool visualization uh, for any for any research purposes you may have. Um, and so what we will look at now is just finally the quantification. So if we go in nuclear, we do SUV calibration. Uh, this is info that is automatically loaded from the DICOM in the presence of that information. So uh, you're always going to want to check this just to make sure that uh, you know you've got the proper voxel units. Your injection dose looks good, um, but if it is present, it should automatically load in. So we'll change uh, the injection dose to four megabecquerels, like you mentioned. We're not going to correct for delay before scanning, but in the case where there's a delay between the injection time and the scan start time, computing uh, the, the, the correction with a half-life is automatic as well, and will be present in the uh, quantification that we obtain. So we're going to put 20 grams, let's say, for the uh, subject weight, we'll remove that. And we'll press OK. And so this applies this scaling to the overlay. We can see that the units of the overlay are now SUV. The underlay is Hounsville units. And what we can do is go into statistics, class statistics, and we can look at our mean SUV, our volumes, and some more statistical analysis of, um, of our different classes. So the more segmentation you do, the more uh, the more rows you'll get in this graph. And if you have a 4D dynamic data set, these will be present uh, on a graph like this. Um, so if you prefer to see it in percent ID per gram, we can go back to the nuclear menu, convert our SUV to percent ID per gram, like this, enter our subject weight, let's say 20 grams. And now our units become percent ID per gram. And when we go into statistics, that is reflected here as well. So I believe those are all the analyses you wanted me to perform, but if there's anything else you want me to look into, please let me know. 
Uh, I'd love to follow up with you and see how you found this demo to be and how analytics can improve your throughput. Um, as always, if you have any questions, please let me know, and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Cheers.